Good morning and welcome to Power Word Zone and welcome to new friends of our mission blogs. Um, a second Easter message for me important is to explain from where the Israelites left Egypt, the threat of, of the Pharaoh wouldn't let the people go and then Moses' last threat as we see the, the Passover lamb being slaughtered and the blood being washed over the doors so that the angel of death or the angel of the Lord can't enter and only the firstborns of the Egyptians would die. And remember, it, was just, it wasn't just the firstborn humans, it was also the firstborn of all their livestock. Oh, what a sad day. Never mind. And then I want to go to the New Testament where we look at Matthew 26, 26 the Lord's Supper. But let's start with this symbol. This symbol is probably the most iconic. The, the cross of Christianity is most probably the most iconic and famous symbol in the world. It is all over. People wear it around their necks. People put it on their doors, in their workplace. They put it on their arms uh, by the form of tattoos and so forth. But sometimes I think it's an abused symbol. Because the cross is really a sacred symbol. And let me remind you where the first Passover was and where it started. So the first Passover then started in the Exodus 12, chapter 12. You can go and read the whole chapter, but basically to remind you then that um, the night before Israel was freed from Egypt and delivered from Egypt to go, uh, they had to slaughter a lamb. It was passed over and then the lamb, the blood of the lamb, this life, uh, blood, blood, this life blood of the lamb was then covered and was painted on the doorpost so then when the angel of death came over Egypt that only the firstborn or the animals and Egypt the firstborn human beings would die and that Passover follow this word Passover blood on the doorpost then will protect the firstborns of Israel and will also then deliver them so that they can move on the next day. So there's a lot of some symbols here and topology. I want you to follow this blood thing, this blood sacrifice, the life blood, and then the lamb. And then we know in Matthew 26, the night before Jesus was crucified, they had the Last Supper, and him and his disciples uh, gathered for the Last Supper. And we also know then, uh, they then on that day during Passover, just before the Feast of the Unleavened Breads, would then slaughter a lamb and then they would uh, eat that lamb during uh, that Last Supper or then the Passover Supper. Now the first Passover is relevant in Egypt because that Passover, you can say the angel of death looked over, looked over the Israelites firstborn. So they were not considered to die. They would survive. They were looked over or passed over. And then the uh, Israelites were released and they exodus out of Egypt. Now this is a beauty of this Passover. And the New Testament cross, I want to call it the New Testament cross of reconciliation and salvation. Because it's so beautiful to me that the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ himself then, becomes our final and perfect atonement and sacrifice. Jesus was sinless, so hence he was the perfect lamb to be slaughtered. Can you see this relation between the Passover just before crucifixion, him being the lamb, and then the lamb to save the world? And I just want to uh, concentrate on a few symbols as I'm going to read from Matthew 26, the Lord's Supper, Matthew 26, verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread, gave a prayer of thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples. Take and eat it. This is my body. So Jesus, the Logos, the bread of life, the bread of life, breaks himself now as a symbol. This is my body. He breaks the bread, the bread of life. Then he took the cup, gave thanks to the Lord, drink it all of you, he said, this is my blood which seals God's covenant. My blood poured out for many for their forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink this wine until the day I drink 
the new wine with you in my Father's kingdom. Now, the blood here is, is so symbolic and, and it's so sacred and, and it, the, the symbolism is so strong. So in that time, yes, they literally, they dumped, they dipped, sorry, they dipped or dunked rather the, the, the bread into the wine. Now watch this, as we, we, we dip the bun into the wine, the bread goes into the wine and then you can see the, the body of Christ or the, the bread of life, the living bread, then soaks up the wine, the sacred blood that washed away our sins. Now that wine is an infusion into the bread. So you can call it then the body of Christ, the living bread, the bread going into the wine, the sacred blood. There's a sacred infusion, a divine infusion happening there. And that's why I also want to call this Passover cross or Easter cross, the cross of infusion, transformation when we are changed inside out, and then transfusion. Transfusion is the challenge of life. We receive God's love when we're born again. We eat of the symbols, the bread of life, Jesus himself, the logos or the bread in, in the communion table, and then the blood that was spilled for our sins that seal us into salvation. And then we transfuse this blood to our brothers and sisters in the sense of love. We transfuse the love. Uh, that is how we delight in God. We love and obey God by practice, practicing it in this way. It will have no sense if we keep this Holy Communion to ourselves. So to explain that infusion again, the cross. So then we infuse ourselves with Jesus on the cross in the same blood. So we infused symbolically and spiritually in Christ and then we are transformed because Christ is in us by the Holy Spirit that changes us. And imagine this cross with two hands on the side. We transfuse the love of God through us to the world. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this gives you a new uh, uh, meaning of Easter. Until next time, stay blessed and keep on believing. Goodbye.